going to pieces. The story was the same all over the canal zone. Malaria, dysentery, pneumonia. But nothing was worse than yellow fever. Each year, epidemics swept across the isthmus, killing men by the hundreds, inciting panic, utterly paralyzing the work. When the Americans arrived in Panama, it was obviously clear that there had to be a medical officer. And one of the leading yellow fever specialists was an army doctor called Colonel William Gorgas. Gorgas had made his name as a frontier doctor in the United States. And on one of his postings, he caught yellow fever. And he recovered. And thereafter, he was immune. And he decided to make it his life's work to battle this terrible disease. For centuries, yellow fever had been thought to be caused by filth. And efforts to combat the disease had revolved entirely around sanitation. But during a posting in Havana, Gorgas had developed a new protocol. Working from an obscure theory in a Cuban medical journal that blamed yellow fever transmission on infected mosquitoes, he carried out an extensive eradication campaign in Havana. Over the course of one year, yellow fever cases there had fallen by more than 95%. Kill the mosquitoes, Gorgas argued, and yellow fever would disappear. Gorgas arrived in Panama absolutely 100% convinced that the mosquito theory of yellow fever transmission was correct. Gorgas put a proposal together to implement a plan similar to that which he had done in Havana. His project was a lot bigger though because in Havana he just had to clean up one city. But in Panama he had to clean up two urban areas separated by 500 square miles of swamp and jungle. Gorgas put together a $1 million proposal and submitted it to the Panama Canal Commission. And they approved $50,000. $50,000. They just didn't get what he was trying to do. The gentlemen of the commission simply didn't believe the mosquito theory. They called it the various balderdash. There was a feeling that we needed a sensible doctor, not this sort of crazy Gorgas with his wild mosquito theories. And actually, one of the leaders of the Canal Commission tried to get him fired and replaced with a friend of his who was actually an osteopath with no experience of tropical medicine at all. On the eve of Gorgas's dismissal, President Roosevelt received a visitor at his home at Oyster Bay, his personal physician, Dr. Alexander Lambert. You are facing one of the greatest decisions of your career, Lambert told him. If you fall back on the old methods, you will fail, just as the French failed. If you back Gorgas, you will get your canal. Lambert appeals to Roosevelt's ego. And he says, this canal is your project. And it's your choice. And Roosevelt buys it. He says, get behind Gorgas and give him the authority and the resources he needs. And so mosquito eradication can begin in earnest. With the blessing and backing of Chief Engineer Stevens, Gorgas launched the most expensive public health campaign in history. William Gorgas is an army officer, so the cleanup effort was conducted with military discipline and precision. He spends $90,000 on screening. He goes about screening off patients so that mosquitoes cannot bite them and transmit their uh, case of yellow fever. And he goes about fumigating the houses throughout the canal zone to kill adult mosquitoes. And then the uh, more extensive effort is to find mosquito larvae in all of the water sources in town and kill the larvae. Gorgas has discovered that if you pour oil on top of the water, you smother the mosquito larvae. He called them wrigglers. So he had to go through every single house, every shack in Panama City and Colón, all along the line of the canal, and find every single water tank, every little puddle, and get them covered with oil. Gorgas's 
team is swarming all over the Panama Canal Zone. They had to screen gutters, they had to put lids on um, water cisterns, Gorgas even got a law passed to make it a $5 fine to have a wiggler in your home. He is at war against the mosquitoes. And he is going to kill them to the last. By August 1906, the monthly tally of new yellow fever cases had fallen by nearly half to 27. A month later, the count was down to just seven. Then, on November 11th, Gorgas called his staff into an autopsy room and told them to take a good look at the corpse on the table. It was, he rightly predicted, the last yellow fever victim they would ever see. The idea that Gorgas was able to conquer this problem is still kind of unbelievable to me. He ended up tracking down individual mosquitoes, which is unbelievable in this this jungle where it essentially never stops raining. And it worked. And it saved thousands of lives. Really was a huge part of what made the digging of the canal possible. By the fall of 1906, Stevens' carefully designed excavation system was running at peak efficiency. It had taken him the better part of an exhausting year to prepare. He'd overseen the construction of thousands of buildings, hired thousands of men 